this. Okay, uh, I'm recording. Uh, so again, uh, welcome to this webinar. We are going to discuss about digital marketing for rural development within Culture Rural Plus. Uh, we try to get the basics and we start uh, with the main topics of today. Um, so as you can see, there's uh, being online, online reputation, digital channels. Uh, because many times uh, people you know, discuss about being online, uh, about trying to attract their project, their enterprise, their business, or simply their projects. Uh, but uh, some, you know, uh, most of the time ends up in having a Facebook page uh, where everyone simply gets bored uh, after a while or doesn't follow a strategy or is just improvised. So we are going to have uh, like a first uh, discussion of um, the main topics and, uh, and all the reasonings we should have before starting being online. And then why being aligned and why it's so important to have a reputation online and which digital channels can then support our projects. So we start with the, the first question, why we are not the first ones online. So when we uh, look for information online, uh, yeah, let's imagine we are, I don't know, organic wine producer and we write on Google as uh, everyone does, um, uh, organic wine. And the first question is, that, yeah, you didn't do the job on my uh, website because I'm not certain. Well, of course, uh, we, you know, the, uh, when, we come, we, when we come first, we should ask ourselves why we are not first or actually what we are looking for. Because many, um, you know, the main point is not does not turn you up, but is all the strategy, you know, uh, of making people reaching us. So uh, it's much more complicated than just having a few words on what we do, just because being online and doing what we do is not enough to make people uh, reach us. Let's be, you know, more concrete. Um, uh, let's imagine, uh, you know, when we make some purchase, uh, we just don't see, uh, I don't know, a mobile phone and we buy it, you know. We look for uh, the reviews of the people, we compare different prices, we compare uh, different, uh, let's say, vendors. We simply want to see uh, in reality how it works, so we might go even to a physical shop to test it out. Do many things before actually buy something or before deciding something. It's like even how we uh, eat tickets or other stuff. So we do many things before actually reaching a decision. So, and exactly uh, when we uh, are online, uh, uh, what we, you know, what it leads us to be online is the reputation. When uh, what we means. Uh, what does it mean? Because uh, otherwise it's still obscure as a concept. Um, let's imagine again, we are this organic winery. Okay, we do an amazing wine. Uh, there's someone coming. Uh, hi, Antonio. Uh, uh, so uh, welcome to today's webinar. Um, <clears throat> so we were discussing about online reputation, which is the first key concept of our discussion. Because when we look for a concept online, we generally stop in the first page of Google. I mean, I'm talking about Google because it gathers 95% of all the searches online. Okay, The rest is Yahoo and Bing and other, uh, other uh, research engines. That's, uh, you know, that's, uh, so we discuss mainly about Google uh, searching. So let's go back on this online reputation. So we, we were discussing about this organic winery, having an online page, so a website, and we look for, uh, you know, what, uh, some organic wine. And we are accused not to, uh, hey, my, um, my research uh, it doesn't show my wine. Uh, of course, uh, 
uh, if we're a small project, we need much more than just doing what we do. We need a, like a very deep plan. And actually uh, in the second part of today's webinar, Francesco is going to explain us uh, the, um, uh, the, the planning. Of course, today is just in pills. So we're going to discuss very uh, simple concepts. Uh, so uh, what, when we are online, we need to first discuss about the intention of people. And uh, this intention of people is called the obscure acronym called SEO, uh, which is search engine optimization. In other words, when we look for stuff online, uh, we type words, right? Uh, the best organic wine in my area, or uh, the, uh, I don't know, uh, I want to buy, uh, let's say imagine uh, organic um, cheap uh, wine, for instance. So these are like simple queries. We write on Google, we write on Bing, or on Yahoo, whatever we use. And these words lead to something, to our decision. Maybe we want to buy something, want to know something. And like, for instance, uh, when the, I don't know, the independence uh, war happened in the United States. So we write this sentence to have something turning up. Uh, but of course, uh, maybe the first um, result when looking for independence war is Wikipedia. And it's not our little blog talking about independence war in uh, US. Uh, of course, these. Uh, you know, um, presence online depends on many factors, which is not just about the content, but about the, how many people, like for instance, visit us, how many times we are discussed, how many times our blog is linked. So uh, the core of our um, presence online is our strategy, because it's not just about turning up online first, but is turning up online in the right moment. That's the, the actually actual secret of being online. So uh, with our online presence, so you know, we, we, uh, try, to, we try to make this funny uh, cloud. Uh, we learned that it's not enough to, to stay that we are good to be, you know, just first, uh, or it's not uh, being aligned the equals, you know, selling. When, when I mean selling is to trigger a decision, you know, to click on a website, to follow video, to subscribe to YouTube channel and all these um, actions. So that's uh, the, you know, the main topic. So in the first, in this first part of the webinar, I'm trying to deconstruct how we work uh, when we are online. In the second part, uh, so Francesco will discuss more about the strategy, how to work back end, you know, how to work uh, to actually have a good online reputation. So just to go back to, you know, ourselves looking for uh, important information we're interested in online, uh, we talk about the customer journey. So um, if we go back to the actual example of the mobile phone, um, looking for information on mobiles doesn't mean that we actually want to buy a mobile. We maybe just want to um, look for interesting facts or we are starting to get the grips of the basics of, um, of that mobile phone or that company. Uh, maybe in one year, uh, uh, the, that the user is going to buy uh, you know, that precise mobile. So, because the, uh, what, when we are online, we, we search, we try to, to get to, uh, the, uh, we try to get aware of what is going on. So we try to get the reviews, we try to, to see uh, all, the, um, all the information and we try to get triggered by the, you know, the other side, which is a business, which is a project, or which is an, uh, a website and so on. So, of course, when I put here uh, store, means when we actually detect, when we actually trigger a decision, okay? It's not just about selling, but, you know, uh, uh, as we are discussing about, you know, the uh, small businesses, sorry, small businesses in rural areas, we want to jump 
uh, and we want to, uh, let's say, um, avoid that remoteness uh, feeling of, okay, we are in a re remote area. We are, you know, we are outside the markets. We are outside the information. We want to uh, show you that actually we can do innovation anywhere in Europe right now. So, uh, so we, uh, like, thanks to Google, uh, we can, um, how to say, classify all the uh, decisions, all the actions we do align according to four um, columns, to four categories, which is I want to know moments. Uh, for if you uh, think, you know, when we want to explore about the information, uh, I want to go moments, uh, the, the best, I don't know, restaurant in our area or the best honey producer in our area. So we look on Google and, may, and maybe, a, you know, a Google map will turn up, you know, and then is when we click on directions and maybe we're driving or maybe we're walking and we reach the destination. I want to do moments. Maybe we want to uh, do something precise. We want to visit a nice place uh, in our area. So we want to do something. And then I want to buy moments, which are all the uh, queries we do online. Um, on, uh, if, we, if we want simply to buy wine or uh, just a, an example of wine or we want to buy anything. You know? So these are the four uh, universal categories to classify what people do online. And knowing what, how people can reach us can make us be the first ones. And that's the key. You know, it's not just being online which makes us be the first, but it's make, you know, we can become the first ones only if we analyze these four categories and we build up a strategy around them okay so this is very important um, so it's important because we can actually plan our online reputation our online presence why we are online and so on so these uh, you can see these are called micro moments and if you look online i can suggest to you you know to reach out for instance the learning of google which is a thing with google or digital uh, garage if i'm not wrong that's the name where google gives per really high quality uh, webinars and lessons so so this Today is just to scratch through uh, the surface of, uh, of a very complex world. Okay. Um, so, just like then, three, um, uh, let's say, um, advice to, uh, to build up this online reputation. Uh, because the point is to understand when these micro moments can reach us. So let's say we are an uh, organic wine, uh, wine producer. Uh, what we expect, what we actually expect from people, do we expect to uh, only sell wine or we want to give information or we want to do uh, some events maybe. So we need to be there to be useful because maybe, you know, we are, let's say we are not very famous around but we want to um, introduce people to how to detect, uh, to distinguish, for instance, organic wine from another wine. Maybe we want to work on more edutainment, okay, so which means education and entertainment. So we have to really plan before being online, because that's one of the mistakes we, uh, you know, particular enterprises or anyone which is not into this digital uh, online presence mood, okay? And then we need to be accountable, which means we need to um, ease the, you know, the customer. When we tell our stories online, um, you know, we generally are very focused on what we do, but not, you know, we don't focus on what actually people think they need to reach us. You know, that's a different perspective in the planning of our uh, online projects. Um, so just to, you know, conclude this first part um, before giving, you know, the, uh, the uh, you know, the, um, the word to Francesco, 
so when we uh, are online, we don't need to make fake uh, contents, which means if we are an organic wine producer, we are an organic wine producer. We, you know, we can't fake uh, who we are, what we do. You know, that's very important to be truthful. So, uh, but at the same time, we need to also understand to whom you know we're selling that wine, for instance, and and to the story, to the story we have, and why it's important to know that story to you know drink that good wine. Okay, and uh, when we are online, also we have to think that it's not an add-on; is something which is you know intertwined with our um, own uh, corporate image is not just thing, you know just something you do uh, apart from what we you actually do in the offline world okay that's very important to understand uh, and the strategy is what we need to actually move on in our online reputation building okay so these are let's say this the little pills uh, to reflect and to move on with our online work and it's what we have to do and what we have to say sorry as the last thing is not just about google because online presence is it's not just about the website we have many more tools many more instruments and that's what we um uh, Francesco now is going to discuss. Uh, maybe if you have questions, it's the moment to just write them down and we can discuss them later at the end. Uh, what do you think, Martin? Is, is it okay or we just have a little discussion right now? Uh, uh, the microphone. Yes, I think no, we can, any we can question, write it down and move on and <laughs> we, will, we will devote some time okay. for questions and debate. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. okay, great. So, so it's time for Francesco to uh, take up the next part. Hi there. Uh, so I would like, before moving on, I would like to know something really important. How many of you have started a business uh, project or are in the process of shaping an idea or they're actually working for their own business? and uh, what's that business about or the, the activity about feel free to to say what you do at the moment please hello i, I can start um i i'm, I'm not uh, having my own project because it's uh, in, uh, my university doesn't allow that we have to uh, work ex exclusively for them but I'm helping my wife with a, a business uh, in the field of um, um, aesthetic, aesthetic and medicine. So I'm, uh, we started about uh, half a year ago, right in, in the middle of the coronavirus epidemic. epidemic. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm very inside of the, the, all the... Uh, the problems of uh, making this a site and putting them but him uh, making it work for, yeah. making it work and 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 be, be visited is there anyone else who wants to share my case is similar i i as a university researcher and professor we don't have um the possibility or we we can we can start a spin-off but it's a little bit different as a regular company. Um, but I am collaborating with some associations that uh, among their objectives are also producing and selling also mushrooms, but everything a little bit in the associative um, framework, not really a market, uh, pure market uh, framework. In my, case, oh, in my case, where I'm a student and I work with Kulra as well. I work uh, as a, a lawyer <laughs> in a volunteering association. I'm 
making it uh, legal in order to can do in voluntary in Africa and all of that. And we have uh, our website, we make podcasts, we have like a radio. But, uh, and just like Okay, cool. Uh, I don't know if anyone else wants to share, but it's um, it's interesting um, that you mentioned already that you have a website. Some of you, uh, like Celia, mentioned some contents they uh, she produces or with with a group to uh, actually talk about uh, their um, their activity. This is doesn't um, doesn't not having a website it doesn't imply the fact that we are obsolete or um, let's say that uh, offline activities are not outdated, um, but there are some advantages of course in being online um, because of course with uh, the new technologies or oh, I shouldn't say any more new because are quite well established. Um, we have we need to to address some our messages in a more uh, efficient way let's say mixing it with of course what is normally done uh, in the offline world we get our uh, audience customers because of course here not everyone does it for the same purpose for instance uh, Celia may may do the uh, promotion activities for donors for her association or uh, uh, Antonio uh, may work with Apple, uh, with his partner to uh, boost the activity. So uh, he has more, um, let's say, retailing purposes. Um, so we have different goals while being online. Let's say that the main advantages of the online world is that we, we give, we have an online, uh, thanks for sharing uh, the link. Uh, we have uh, and a real-time response um, while being online and we have, we can establish an on-time relationship with people who wants to donate, who wants to know more about our activity, whether it's profit or non-profit, or uh, someone who has bought our product or someone who wants to buy our product. We can control and monitor real-time things. That's something that offline work do doesn't allow if you imagine on um, in, in, have um, a thought about uh, people giving flyers in the street, how can it be possible to monitor something which is um, which is um, so uncontrollable, like putting flyers and not having track on what's going to be the next action that the customer does. And then there is your the line uh, promotion, the matter is that is more cost could be most cost efficient of course it's not free every time marco was talking about seal but uh, there are some activities seal can be something less expensive or zero expensive or free but there are some other um, bits of the online world which are which are to pay of course can be more efficient than the offline one so um Basically, we build uh, our goal is to build a relationship with someone who's who's online and is either active, actively seeking for our our sort of message or products, or uh, to try to engage someone who who's not even thinking at the moment to, for instance, buy mushroom, like in the case of Martin. Like I'm, I may be interested. If something pops uh, pops in uh, in front of me, and then I think that I might buy mushrooms from Martin, but I'm, I can be someone who's actually seeking for a, a mushroom purchase online. So, someone, most of people, uh, at least we we work as well as uh, State Streets uh, with um, local producers, and many times there is this vague. Um, feeling or, or knowledge of the online world and many uh, people ask uh, ask us why should I do for instance this activity um, this digital activity because I'm just a little business or a little farmer uh, why should I use this dig digital channel this other digital channel why should I 
pay for something which is uh, not um, visible and material? Um, this is a tricky question to answer because, of course, there is a, um, a general, let's say, in general, everything is shifting online. Also, customers' behavior, also people, how they get the information is now getting more and more online. If we uh, just have a browse into the statistics that uh, you can easily, easily uh, find online, about 73% of Europeans buy, buy online now. In some countries in Europe, 92% of people buy things online. Also grocery uh, of whatever sort, uh, because um, many people argue on the massification of retailing online, but uh, actually you can find, it is it possible to find many things online. Um, we, we have to say that now the 19% of uh, people buy also food online and the, the food market, at least in Italy, is worth is worth a fortune and is the same across across Europe. So sometimes working in the online world gives us a, a more um, a limitless um, perspective on the market which is which surround us. For instance, um, a practical example is the is our local history, let's say. Many uh, farmers, many activities have popped, especially in the primary sector, locally. So uh, the end of the this process of setting up businesses which are mainly related to grocery food production transformation a local level is the um is an overcrowded local market so there are many uh, people selling wine many people selling a specific product so there is a massive competition on local level while uh, the the next step could be just moving our uh, to have a look outside our own little market and to do so uh, okay we can move in the offline world with distributors in the case of businesses but also we can work with online uh, tools to build a new um, a group of customer which is outside our comfort local comfort zone also in the case of uh, non-profit organization which uh, uh, for which Sally worked for for instance um, donors uh, of the of the, uh, local level might not uh, may donate automatically but then your um, donation cap your income is always the same so you can do a set amount of activity especially because uh, you receive donation from the same you may receive donation from the same amount of people while looking outside this uh, this local dimension, implementing online activity may open up new possibilities. Of course, it's not an easy word. And now today we're just scratching the surface to get get a bit acquainted to which are the, which is the potential and which are the channels because it's something we see every day while surfing the net. We get access to many many contents, and many of the things I'm gonna say you may realize that something uh, which is online and you see it every day. So before starting to talk about which are uh, our channel to be online, we have to keep in mind that the online world is not far away from the offline world. Our base needs to be always the, um, the awareness on what we're doing. For instance, can I ask you, An Antonio, uh, you were talking about uh, your uh, partner business what yeah. do you th what do you think if you can describe me what you do and which is your uh, strong point in in the business of my wife okay. yes uh, yes the strong point uh, okay she she was an, an an employer she worked for 18 years in a in a pharmacy uh, so she she and uh, particularly in dermocosmetics so she knows about uh, the dermatology and, and um, it's something important because even doctors don't um, work very well with cosmetics. So she tried to um, uh, use the, that special skill. And uh, as she was in employed, we made a project uh, that obliged her to, to invest some money 
it, it is uh, co-founded by the government and uh, uh, in terms of in uh, uh, jurors i don't know the name in english uh, interest interests interests mm -hmm. um the, the 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 wages are lower so she have to work five years in this business and uh, uh, what were you asking uh, specifically um, oh yeah if you can if you can tell me which is the let's say the compared business. to uh, to every other uh, business in the cosmetic sector the, which the is demand. your product and which is the main Ma value of that product okay. you would say that yeah, it's, it's only yours i mean okay it's, it's, it's product is mainly services hmm? she, mm. she also has some special products that you can also buy in, in pharmacies it's not easy to buy all of them in pharmacies but if you and if the pharmaceutical no you can you can uh, buy uh, send uh, make it uh, you can uh, order it but then then usually not this uh, common disponible um and the but his main uh, uh service the service is his main uh, occupation to treat the face and the scars and the spots in in the face and the uh, fat in in, in 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 every every place and she has uh, uh, also the the i don't know the name to, to take off the 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 the, the this the, from the from the ladies with the uh, laser mm -hmm. uh, it's a so service scrubbing for probably uh, kind of can, uh, the, uh, the permanent depilation maybe this oh, okay, okay, okay. okay 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 with laser so she has a lot of uh technology uh, apparatus uh, the most uh, great investment is in apparatus that that are good a good apparatus so she could uh, she could do some good services not yeah. concurring with the other common okay. uh, aesthetical service that only paint nails and things like that simple sir or makes i i these things and take the the the, the women uh, the depilations with the cera i don't know the name in english yeah Again, wax 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 yes with wax we she doesn't do nothing nothing of that okay so she, she only uses do, technology uh, and a strong a point is to use technology to that provide only she a can, service only she can use for instance she makes she applies botox uh, hyaluronic acids uh, she, uh, uh, products to take the the, the reeds from mm -hmm. from the ladies and from from the so, so specialized products uh, medical like okay mm -hmm. okay so basically <clears throat> what what we have to be able to do is to um let's say focus on our difference because it's the difference and the values we uh, um, incorporate in our business the part we are going to communicate and and the part we're going to shape our message on so said that for instance our business um, um our business day streets uh, is born as an e-commerce but it does also services so it has different products so if I have to describe my service, I would say that my strong point is to be a one-stop shop, which means, um, first of all, my target. Who's my target? I'm talking to a specific audience, uh, which have to be well-defined. In our case, is primary sector business, uh, primary sector-based businesses in central Italy. And I'm talking about apparently a known, uh, um, not well-defined group, but it already is a, a defined group. So small, local, primary sector-based businesses. And that's my target customer. What I'm offering them, which is not uh, available locally at least. So I'm talking to them to offer them a, a, the only uh, a place we have to, uh, they can get uh, different sort of, of services. They don't have to look anywhere else. They can find um, the service linked to the other and they built in, in the principle of economy and transparency. This is the strong point. And especially it's focused on the application on new technologies with that, which are not uh, used by other 
companies in the area. So which is my unique selling, uh, unique value proposition? The fact that I'm, I'm a one-stop shop and the fact that I use transparency, the, cre the principle of economy, and um, I'm building up uh, a, uh, um, a service which is all-inclusive and addressed to a specific target. So uh, this, the reason why I was mentioning this, but because we have to be aware of ourselves and what we're going to do, which is our project, to communicate it, to use the channel online, to mold our message and to actually get the right people and to know who we are talking to. So we have to be clear. So for instance, Antonio was describing to me the business tomorrow will work again, uh, uh, any, uh, uh, once more to, to his message to make it more refined and uh, on the point to, because when he meets someone in one minute, he has to say, I do, um, my partner do this, this and that. The advantage of meeting her is this one. But also online, messaging someone on WhatsApp, broadcasting a message, it's something really precise. It has to be on the, on the spot. Yes. So, uh, yeah. I, I'd like to ask you, I, I don't know if I, I can interrupt or, or... Yes, yes, of course. I would love to, uh, to interrupt. Uh, one of our problems, is, is we have a, 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 this site. It was made by a professional that was included in project of the investment, uh, according to the government. So the site was made by a professional, according to us. And we tell the, we tell the professional the, all the materials, of course. But, and uh, we also make a, a Facebook and an Instagram uh, uh, um, sites, but uh, I I don't know what is your uh, sense of the uh, the importance of the, the online uh, opportunities of, of the online uh, experience because I think uh, um, in our case we uh, we also are in the market for of an year and we have the, the pandemic of course so it's, it's difficult yeah. but. Uh, I don't think people usually came here to uh, to, to, to to his shop or to to his to, to ask for his service to phone or something like that uh, because they see in the internet or because they see in Facebook. They, they don't. They, his... they they're not coming from there. No, I don't think. No, we 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 have all that kind of things automatically. You can you can make an appointment with with her. Uh, you mm -hmm. can mark some, ask for some treatments or some problem, but people, I don't think they use it. They mm -hmm. come here more because they see, they've talked with someone who came here and li likes a lot and the result was very good and uh, much better than any, any other place that she was made some years ago. So, okay. so most of the people that came here, because this moment I'm, I'm in this shop, um, uh, came by the mouse to mouse uh, effect, not by the okay. internet or by Facebook and things like that. But this, of course, it's important because a, she a good contacts with, with her, her clients by Facebook or by Messenger and by other places, or WhatsApp, things like that. Only for communicate with clients, not for add, adding new clients. Yeah, because of what course, this, this, this is a good point because mainly uh, online. Uh, channels are um, uh, first of all are uh, uh, something we have to harvest and work on daily because it's it's important first of all when, to set when up you, when you meal when you meal harvest after is after one 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 year yeah maybe? no after after you publish your website after your launch your page then you have to like uh, upload things and. Of course, the, those, the content you put it on and the strategy you apply to your business is addressed to uh, tackle a new public or um, let's say harvest, like um, uh, um, get a better bond with the client you already have. And there may be the client who follow you online every day. For instance, uh, um, someone gets there for the first time, not. Uh, hearing at all uh, a message on the uh, on the internet, but ends up like knocking at the door and having the treatment. Uh, the lady or the man 
get into your uh, partner's um, uh, business uh, is super enthusiastic about the job and keep in touch. So probably your wife has, has said, like, put, uh, shoot a like on the page, put a like on the page and keep following me. But then how to keep the relationship with this person? Because of course, there is a, a screen in front of us. There is not your wife talking directly with okay. someone. I, I understand is, that. Yes, there but is this, like this the content. Yeah. This is a kind of business that the people don't want other people to know they came here, you know. Uh, ladies came here and uh, stay more beautiful in, in, and uh, they, they do some treatments, but they, they don't want nobody to know they came here. So they, they don't go and put like in Facebook or say, oh, that clinic is very good and I recommend it. That our pro that's our problem, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, no, sorry for the noise of the car on, on the background. It's a good point because basically it's um, uh, once you've done the website and uh, actually before doing the website and before thinking on the page, we have to think when working on, uh, when like promoting our activity, whether it's profit or no profit, Think about a strategy. We're we are talking. I'm gonna use, if you agree, your case to go on with the uh, with the with the topic to get more in deep and then to check what's what's happening with with that. So okay. basically, we have to first of all we have to select the channels uh, because we have an audience. So probably uh, your partner can describe exactly who's the target customer. So could say like. Uh, I'm targeting ladies between, I don't know, 30 and 45 for specific treatments. Uh, those ladies uh, are need, have this specific need because of course we address a service to tackle a need, uh, to be beautiful, to be prettier, to be better shaped, um, to, to have more, to, to have more success with men or with women or to sell more, uh, uh, grocery products or to sell uh, a mobile phone like Marco was telling before. Um, we have an objective. We, have, we are tackling a need uh, and we have to put that first. So your uh, partner business um, uh, is uh, using technology as a, uh, the, the main point is uses technology to, for um, beauty treatment so the treatment are more professional and maybe time effective and they last for longer. I'm just wondering. So I know what I'm talking about then. I'm talking to a lady, 30 to 45, who does that, who, who has this need. So which channel I'm gonna choose? I have to know first what my uh, customer is, is, um, is using. So uh, say I know uh, in the chat, for instance, I know Elisa. Elisa runs a bakery, right? Um, the bakery, uh, of course, um, people are getting a lot into uh, food Instagramming or like are really uh, browsing online on social media, especially the visual one to um, um, look more content about food. So one of our channel could have been Instagram or could be Instagram as the one of your partner to see which is the result to show what someone wants to be younger, for instance, uses a younger social network or use on like more institutional social network, which is Facebook. Selecting my channel, the social media, for instance, is a massive um, way in which to find all sorts of streams to communicate on. So uh, Marco was mentioning SEO and SEO it's part of an activity we do online on website, but mainly our marketing uh, revolves on few channels. So we have the search engine marketing, which is something we do uh, to appear first in the result page of Google or Bing or Yahoo. But normally the plus 90% of users worldwide use Google. There is display advertising, which is the banner you see on the side of the uh, of, of websites. 
For instance, you're looking for a bicycle and then you see that online uh, on a website, on another website that doesn't have anything to deal with, uh, you find uh, buy this brand new uh, carbon bicycle, which is lighter and, uh, and it's uh, long lasting, for instance, because we have just been looking for something or we have been searching for something that then appears in a banner. Uh, then there is the, the social media marketing. As we said, your uh, Antonio's partner, Antonio's wife uses Facebook, I guess, and Instagram, uh, as, as he was saying. And those are activities we do on a specific channels. Uh, social media marketing is a, another like discipline, which is, um, let's say, involving all sorts of uh, social media. Social media are varied and also uh, addressed to different purposes. For instance, there is, you said, Martin and Antonio, that you work for the university and then you don't have your business, but then the promotion is also about yourself. If you want to get a better reputation, it's not no, just addressed to retailing. Donation, reputation, purchase. We have a, a goal in the end. The personal goal could be to have a better reputation uh, and to place uh, the researcher profile better to be not just uh, um, uh, considered for the scientific work, but also for the positioning we have online. ResearchGate for, uh, for researcher is a social network in the end. It's a portal, uh, yes, but it's a, a, a network in which you can talk to many other researcher and in which you can display your knowledge and you can advertise yourself. That's another channel. In the social media marketing uh, channels, there are many, many platforms which we can consider. Then there is the email marketing, which is normally what we receive when we A, accept all the uh, privacy policies and we click on accept all. Then all of a sudden we start to receive emails from random people advertising something when we enroll a newsletter, so when we click on, I want to receive news, and then we get information on something we are really interested in. Affiliate marketing, which is basically uh, what is, um, for instance, um, um, sorry, I, I get always Antonio. Antonio's uh, wife business, which is a beauty, uh, let's say beauty salon, a beauty activity, wants to, uh, stand out and wants to uh, immediately reach the audience and get more reputation. Why don't get a, a partnership with some with a brand of cosmetic product, uh, which is more famous and who can boost our image. So this is an activity which is quite common. You may have seen uh, in the in uh, on TV, for instance, not just online, that sometimes um, advertising have more than one product in that when um, there are some, uh, for instance, um, uh, sp tiny spots, especially during football matches that include more than one product, or sometimes in the affiliate marketing, we connect to a brand. Uh, many of you may have known about the Italian influencer, Chiara Ferragni. Chiara Ferragni is a brand, okay? Uh, ooh, the one familiar with it, she has an eye, especially she focuses on fashion. And sometimes what she does to, um, to promote a product, well, what products do to promote themselves more is to ask her to uh, be advertised with her brand, together with a brand. So uh, one way Evian, the a notorious make of water used to stand out more was to add RI and uh, be in the channels of Chiara Ferragni to stand out more and to get more customers. I'm talking about, um, let's say, uh, a, the customer point, the product point of view, but then there is also, when you see non-profit campaign, you have testimonials. Uh, testimonials sometimes are brand themselves. So you are doing a sort of affiliate with them. So there is a um, notorious footballer, for instance, uh, uh, um, promoting a, a um, charity campaign to support Celia's uh, NGO. 
that could be associated to an affiliate um, um, process, let's say. We yeah. are in the shade of someone with a better placed reputation, and we are uh, um, being with the induction of his presence or, or, or the, the, the pairing with another product with a better reputation, we are actually growing our, feeding our reputation, standing out more to achieve a public. And then there is market, uh, mobile uh, marketing, which is every activity you can do on mobile. Whether like it's up, yes. Something about, about, about the email marketing, and I have to know what your opinion. Because this, uh, we, it's, uh, it's relatively easy to find uh, some emails from people from Villarreal uh, and send them mails. But uh, we have uh, this, some problems because of the protection of the data. Uh, we are afraid of sending mails, for instance. We, are, we do a lot of marketing by uh, in the site and by Facebook and things uh, and something like that. But I, we don't send emails because we are afraid. Is is that any problem if we send some emails uh, promoting the the this this uh, services? Okay. Uh, basically, uh, um, to not incur in any problem, instead of have, uh, putting in your mail list people who you know uh, uh, you know of, you just have to actively ask to people to enroll your newsletter. How to do it? Simply just get a sheet of paper A4 with all lines, as we did many times. For instance, you see the uh, I have to do this. Sorry, uh, they this brand this brand here the uh, root of wine brand. Normally, when me and Marco go uh, organize events or are invited to events, we do a lot of affiliate marketing offline mainly. Um, we ask to people to write their name, write their, their email and sign to give the consent to receive the newsletter. What does, it, what does this action do? It creates what is called a customer base. If we know, if we manage to include with their consent, of course, people in our email and to send them emails, we can keep the relationship. And you will see that from emails, basically, not many people probably will open it, but some will open and some of them will actually get into your shop because they receive the news. For instance, this month is the um, uh, skin rush prevention, I'm just saying something. Yeah. And you offer a special treatment for, for a specific rush. So you can but advertise so it on we email. We cannot advertise it directly. We must ask, can we send you some, exactly, some messages exactly. about this? Yes or no? Exactly. First, yes. First, yeah? They have okay. to clearly accept. They, yeah. they have to clearly accept. And it's one thing, it could be, uh, it could be the- Could uh, be made by mail. Uh, could be by uh, via email, but better if it's like to leave your uh, yeah. your uh, let's say so something which is real, uh, a sheet of paper, uh, yeah. or like take part to a fair and ask uh, to the to the owner of the fair to pass on to you uh, the contacts after asking. Yes, but in in this case of business, it's very difficult to, to do something like that. Mm -hmm. So you have to have an agreement and there is there you need a regulation for the data yeah. exploitation uh, if if you just start putting in your shop in, in the shop of your wife like a, 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 an a4 paper with of course all the rules written in, on every paper saying this data is used just for our purpose yes yes. Uh, yes it's you have to state which is the purpose of the usage how to uh, ask for to not receive any more that email. Yeah, it has to be a clear, a clear uh, consent. Because I, I'm asking this because every every day I, I receive a lot of mails from Chinese people t selling me plastics and things like that, and nobody do, does nothing. I, I, I think nobody is uh, charged of, because of that. So. There are rules, but nobody uh, uh, regulates, regulates, I think, at least so, in Portugal. Yeah, the, uh, well, it, it's important to have everything clear and, on, and not expose our 
project, whether it's a business or an NGO, to the risk of uh, any uh, uh, infringement of the law and uh, any, any other action which is, of course, deriving from our uh, our action, which is not in line with that, with the with the data protection. But, but I think that is more the problem if it is Google or Facebook or something big. If if you are small, I don't think it is too important. Or do you think also it's also important? It, it is important because, uh, especially in this case, uh, one thing you have to build. We were saying at the beginning, right at the beginning, that we have to build a relationship. A relationship with the customer or a donor or whoever is looking for uh, this, the thing we are have an offer, whatever is material or immaterial as a, or a service, is that we don't have to break the uh, trust. So if we send an, an email which is not have been uh, agreed, I can lose the trust of a potential buyer. So not only the, 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 the risk of having, uh, a, a, let's say, a, um, a report or uh, to be reported to any uh, privacy authority, but also the fact that we, then we may lose a, a customer. And then once it's, it's lost, it's forever. Also, because one thing I haven't mentioned that um, the reason why we have to actually have a strategy and be online being online doesn't mean to post every day or to have to release something every day, but it's um, uh, to have a, a, um, a, a continuity in, uh, in our presence, which is regular or close enough to be regular, uh, is the fact that the, public, the audience we get online is quite unfaithful. So the difference between like the, the, re the relationship we have with the uh, local grocer, for instance, um, my grandma used to go to the same uh, grocery shop and they have a trust. They know each other and they would have likely been living next to the one, one another. When we are in, in the online world, everything is liquid. So I don't know the person who's selling me something or is uh, telling me uh, about the mission of his organization. It's the really is hard. not personal. Not exactly. Personal. It's no, hard it to is. build an empathy. We build an empathy not with the person, but with the message. Yeah. And it's still, it, if we're talking about product, as in your case, we don't have um, like a philanthropic mission. We are talking about a service which has to be sold and delivered. Say that tomorrow there is someone, I, I, I hope it won't happen, that sells exactly the same product in your area uh, with a uh, smaller price then public will swap, switch to something new or someone opens a shop but is same price or 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 more expensive but gets a better reputation for whatever reason public online co customers are really uh, are reliable and unfaithful and, and but it's a massive portion of audience we miss if we don't approach them especially because now uh, we get less and less time, especially for purchases. We saw during the pandemic something happened, which is which gave actually the kick also to our business. Uh, the need to turn online because offline it wasn't possible to have any more the activity to to run the activity we were doing in the past. So the fact to be forced to shift shift to 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 the online world. Uh, to sell forced also many people to approach the online retailing to buy. But then people, uh, customers are, are bombed with many information. We have to have a good sale to stand out. Otherwise, when we, uh, we write down in Portugal, in uh, Villarreal, uh, beauty treatment near me, some, something will happen and there are going to be five, six points maybe around me. And it's not necessarily you to, to stand out. And so we've been forced to refine our strategy as businesses and to actually consider for the one who weren't online to, to um, refine our way to be online and actually to approach new ways of showing things. So 
why you have uh, a pepper, a salad, and an apple, which are really random but green, is that we have three different uh, we have three different categories of uh, of channels we use. So we have the one we own, so our website, our blog, our application if we have one, our pages, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. There is our YouTube. Then there is what we earn. That's not ours. So um, let's say that um, uh, the Sally uh, uh, NGOs uh, gets noticed by um, uh, an NGO center um, or a, a network for volunteering. And they uh, write an article on Celia uh, Association or, or uh, sorry, NGO. What happened is that she, that's a channel she earned by doing her own um, uh, communication activity, by doing her, her job within the association and doing the daily activity, she get noticed. Let's say that some of the earned channel are not that earned, that not earned by doing something actively, are earned also by paying because there are influencers, for instance, doing, um, let's say, advertising a product just because they like it. And some influencers who advertise a product because they are paid for. So this is the border, the fine line between what we earn and what we pay. Within the paid uh, media, we have PPC means pay per click, which is all the campaign um, you see on the first result. Um, let's say the, 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 the page of the results is called SERP, a search engine result page. On, the, on that SERP, uh, which is uh, so-called in the jargon, we, we find on the top part um, the, the, the paid results. So the results who actually are there because they are um, the business behind those results or those information have started a paid campaign on Google. And then there is the display part that the, it was the one we were talking about. And of course the affiliate. So influencers uh, are can be an, uh, an affiliate and paid campaign. Sometimes uh, affiliates uh, cannot, uh, can be also not uh, paid because maybe we have a business we cooperate with and we have a different agreement. So we don't uh, pay to work with them, but uh, we are there to cooperate and grow. So um, if we back on, or on our own media, how to use the own media? We have to have a calendar. Now I'm roughly like going through this, this, uh, this mechanism, but we have a website which needs to be updated. There is a blog which, which needs to be updated. Let's say that we have to position better our, uh, uh, to position better our business. And in Antonio's case, we have to advertise and get more uh, customers uh, to get into our shop door. And they leave the online world. Everyone is online, whether it's on the phone or, or on, on, on a desktop or laptop. We may have to feed our blogs because the blog, if we talk about a specific uh, topic, Someone who's actively, actively gonna look for suggestion to film, to be more beautiful, to have better hair, to have a better skin, will find the content that uh, uh, Antonio has put online. So Antonio website has to be updated. Article needs to come out on the owned media, which is something we are not paying at the moment because we are just producing content. Of course, we have to learn how to write a content. That's uh, learning SEO rules, um, it's, um, it's crucial to be found online. Deciding, the, uh, choosing the right keyword uh, to, which are based on the moments, on, our, on, on the macro moments Marco was talking about, is crucial to come up with the result. Um, one thing you might have mentioned before, uh, let's see, sorry, I'm, I'm just reading also the, the comment. Uh, 
yes, of course. Uh, it's, this is uh, to, to answer. Uh, Celia was writing, uh, since a while you compelled to put a, an Edibu sign. Yes, in fact, the first result we see on Google have the uh, small sign ADV, advertising. Uh, the advertising is all, is, is all signed, let's say. But there are some uh, activities we do, which are, of course, uh, promotional, doesn't fall in the advertising, which is, no, is normally paid, is, is on a paid media. Um, which can, uh, which are, which promotes the business without being, uh, without falling in the need of having the ADV signed next to it. For instance, uh, the blog, blogging activity helps out to look within our uh, customers, uh, the one interested in uh, getting the treatment we are advertising through an article. An article could be suggestion on how to be beautiful, but also uh, five rules to have better hair. It could be uh, talking about a technology to a new technology that is, is in use in, uh, in Antonio's uh, shop um, and it's advertised to a content. There is also Facebook, on the Facebook page, we have plenty of contents that have to be produced to uh, talk about our, our value. When I was asking before, uh, what, when I was saying before, um, uh, what is, um, um, sorry, one second. So, um, what what we what we are uh, advertising online or talking about online uh, as to the our message has to go through different channels the only one are the one on on which base our uh, content campaign so um, it's the so called organic uh, uh, organic content is basically what we produce to address a message uh, for instance, the message of uh, new technology, uh, the, the, the value proposition of a new technology applied to the beauty sector. The fact that our treatment lasts more and is more cost effective, that can be structured on uh, uh, an organic campaign. The organic campaign goes through, as, as we were saying, on the own media. So Antonio, who uh, currently has a website, a blog probably on the website, who has um, a social media account has to build up a calendar on which uh, stream the various content, which are talking are always connected to what he's offering. The same for the NGO. An NGO has a goal and a vision and has to pass on the vision and the goal through the various activity, but also on messages which are just talking about the uh, actual um, uh, the actual uh, uh, vision or content. So um, when we are when we are online seeking for uh, for customers, we have two different uh, um, let's say um, parallel word. There are people who are already, as we say, uh, as we were saying before, actively looking for what uh, what the, our product represents or our product. For instance, someone uh, looking for uh, biscuits online, like our artisan biscuits online, uh, may uh, uh, may see, uh, for instance, uh, uh, Elisa's bakery online because she managed to uh, build up a great content with the right keyword, which stands out. And um, she's uh, catching the attention of people. She's able to catch the attention of those people who are seeking for that product, but not sure where to buy it. So we, have, we are in, in the inbound word. The inbound word is mainly based on content. So the inbound word, as we are saying, is representing some a group of uh, potential customers which are um, already looking for uh, what we have on offer, but they haven't found us yet, or they, they have to find us. 
then the outbound is something which is normally running through paid campaign because is someone is a group massive group of people who are not may, they may can maybe they are interested in what we have an offer but they are not looking for uh, for instance uh, biscuits at the moment so we have to pay uh, an advertising campaign online to show uh, our biscuits and to tell those people who haven't realized they need biscuits at the moment uh, to tell them if you decide to buy a biscuit here is my shop you can buy by clicking and getting onto my website writing me or buying on the e-commerce etc 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 once we are online it's, what is important is to and it's related to the presence is actually uh, to build the awareness on what we have to, to say on our history our values uh, the our identity so, so to create uh, the the awareness on uh, on on our brand on our activity on who we are so for instance uh, communicating the the goal of the NGO communicating what we are doing and uh, molding the message not to necessarily orient it straightforward to get a donation that's crucial because uh, people uh, have to um, get to know us at least uh, get get to see what we do and then to therefore uh, have an interest and show an interest. So um, our goal is always in our message to get an interaction, uh, whether it is click on the website, for instance. Uh, if we have to guide someone through a journey, we may decide to um, post uh, a post on Facebook let's say, pay to get out in the, in the world and then um, get our message also to people who are not looking to, to, uh, for, for our things now. So we get, we get to meet many people and then those people have to find something else to do after they got to see our post. What do they do? The, in, the, in, the, in the caption, they will see, read more on our blog. They will click the click will is aimed to generate an interest so to give more information is the sign that someone is actually willing to read more so by reading more we have to step into another step which is to um to um, instill the desire of purchasing or uh, contributing to a cause let's say that i'm i've, I've been really good at uh uh, getting to meet the, the potential donor, explaining my, uh, my goal and my vision and what's my mission, which are my projects and what uh, I'm, go I'm, I'm going to do now after launching my campaign and what I want to do with my campaign. Uh, I have to convince them to then do something. I'm instilling the desire that has to turn into an action, a donation, a purchase. We oh, can be like leaving my the contact to be in touch. For instance, uh, maybe uh, Antonio has on offer um, several things, but not exactly the one I need. But I see that Antonio by uh, talking like confidently showing me uh, the uh, the way the center works, uh, the um, uh, the ethics behind it or um, the way they treat customers, for instance, by noticing the customer care he puts uh, in his activity, then I'm maybe, I'm maybe not interested in a skincare uh, treatment, which is not an offer uh, this month, but I may be interested in something else, for instance, a nail done next month. So I'm gonna write my email and say, uh, keep me updated on next offer and I'll put send so i'm currently within the customers the potential customers and i i will be willing to buy something what's when it's going to be the turn but i've actually done an action so to create awareness and to step into the other uh, step of the funnel what we saw before is a funnel so basically uh, a step-by-step -step, um, funnel 
in which we enter and we go beating deep, beating deep and beating deep and to actually finish off with an action where there is a counter or the purchase or a donation. To do so, to create awareness, we have to uh, go through a process, which is uh, the branding process. The awareness is it's, it's also known as branding. The branding is made of different aspects. So you see now this piece with, uh, uh, with, with Beezine. Uh, the branding is actually the whole lot. The awareness is part, is made of activities which are uh, whether uh, are going from marketing uh, to advertising to uh, all the activities we could do also offline to build our reputation, our identity as a business. I'm not even saying online, as a business. So we have to build our identity and to uh, be recognized for that identity. And we do it in this stage. For instance, if I want to build my identity as a, as a baker, let's say, I would advertise, I would, I would market, for instance, a content talking about my ingredients, how good are my ingredients, and maybe um, highlight some of the properties of those ingredients. For instance, um, uh, those ingredients come from a short supply chain, are sustainable. This gives me a value I have to communicate and then it's going to be part of my brand, which is targeting some clients. So I have to know my target customers to actually build my message. And my message will, will, will um, strengthen the relationship I have with my, with my uh, audience or customers. For instance, if I'm, if I'm communicating sustainable ingredients and sustainable products, I'm likely to get people who actually go for normally buy um, organic products or who are into sustainability, into uh, um, respect of the environment. So I have to therefore, uh, in my messages, put all the value I want to communicate. For instance, the values of sustainability, it needs to be part of my language. And these contents, which are actually in the bin or in the piece of marketing, uh, are gonna build my brand, which is gonna be full of values. I'm gonna communicate to people and people are gonna go through every step of the funnel. So last bit, and then uh, I'm gonna, we're gonna like uh, open up a bit to this, to question and bit of talking among us is the fact that when we stand, um, we put ourselves on the internet to get the attention of people. And uh, uh, we actually managed to uh, catch that attention or uh, we uh, managed to meet people actively looking for things. We build their, they, they get, we get their consideration therefore the evaluation once we step into the buy block, which is which cannot also be, which can can't only be the buy product buy button or buy block can be also a, an action one. Uh, we have to guide them to reiterate what is the uh, um, let's say process of buying and telling to other people they have done something and they have, have actually enjoyed our. Uh, content. For instance, Antonio uh, managed to advertise a really good, uh, or managed to communicate a really good service, which is actually representing all the value proposition he, he wants to communicate. So it's super technological, super efficient. So this um, uh, message uh, gets to people uh, who actually uh, get an interest and then enter the door of his shop. Then once they bought and they had an experience with us, they have to be in, a, to stay there. So I don't have to, they don't have to come back to me just because they've found me online. It's just uh, also because we have a relationship. They have purchased already and they have experienced a treatment in, 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 Antonio's, in Antonio's shop. So they enjoy the, the, um, the service, they start to tell to other people. So 
online world can also have an impact on the offline world in this sense. So by advertising in the offline uh, in the online world, we can get in the offline world an effect which is uh, amplified. I get to know Antonio's shop. I tell to my friend who's a similar target to me, who needs the same thing. I said, I've, I've really found a place where what I was looking for uh, was given me uh, given to me in a really wonderful way. It actually fulfill all my needs. It may suit you as well. So another client is going to get into Antonio's shop. And then we create a relationship that it's possible to keep both on online and offline because then uh, the online channels can also be used for keeping a relationship. Also with a customer who has who have to purchase something uh, offline. So um, I'm gonna stop now uh, because I've, I've, I've bombed you with words. I, I would like to know if everything is clear or uh, if you have any question or if something like it's clicked in your mind uh, and you can actually relate more on the activity you're doing for your project. Well, I can I can speak as a citizen now more than, and I am amazed how every day the things I think I talk also, but even by thinking appears uh, in my email box or Facebook or whatever. How artificial intelligence and CEO are doing a very <laughs> good job. A good job. Uh, too, too, too good job because yeah. I am even scared. So uh, it's true that uh, probably there are uh, ways of doing CEO that are not uh, even very uh, legal or whatever, but are very effective because I am amazed how, how I, before I'm thinking almost, it's, it's, uh, it's appearing the the thing uh, I'm, uh, I'm thinking of or I'm planning to buy or planning to, yes. to, to travel. If you look for something in the internet, you'll get a lot of uh, suggestions in, in Facebook and the internet and in email even sometimes. It's common for, for me too. And I think for all of us. Yes, but uh, if they are selling or giving these kind of things that are to cover uh, to cover the camera of our computers or laptops when when they uh, are off or on, but the camera is not on, is because uh, I think our our uh, devices are always listening to us normally. I guess recording or getting some keywords every time. Uh, well, I feel really uh, seized as a citizen, yes. We normally give uh, our consent to things. Um, so, yes, it's a good point. The what, what, the what you're saying is a good point, but also when we buy a smart TV, let's say, that we uh, basically give the consent uh, to specific clothes. The important thing is always to read things uh, because sometimes we are really quick on evaluating stuff and then we put uh, um, accept cookies, accept all. Yes. So you do cookies is, 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 I, I don't know what your opinion because we are obliged to, to accept all cookies because we, if we don't, we can see nothing. Hmm? Uh, so what do basically, we do there is a way. There is a way. Every, uh, uh, everyone is obliged to give you the chance to select which sort of cookie to deselect. So uh, be careful every time to uh, sell your uh, studying probably low, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. May, what may kind, also what kind intervene of on that. Should we accept? Uh, not everyone. Basically, uh, every website is, uh, um, um, let's say, uh, obliged to give you the chance to select which sort of cookies to accept if there are more. Then, yes. of course, there are some websites which do not have uh, many kind of cookies, but um, they have just accept or not accept. But the mm -hmm. others, 
Mm -hmm. And the others who have who process many more data, uh, they have to give you the chance to select or deselect why it's used this thing. There are positive and negative aspects on, on, cookie, uh, on cookie exploitation. Let's say that uh, uh, the use of cookies make a more e efficient profiling of customers. Because if you are basically, when you, when you step into the paid marketing, let's say, and you have to advertise uh, your beauty salon, okay? And, uh, and you start to do a campaign uh, online using Google, okay? Or using Facebook, because Facebook does more or less the same thing. You accept, you don't accept any cookie, but you have a profile. So because you are registered, basically you give your consent to the use of data and you put data in. Uh, let's say that the uh, artificial intelligence behind those massive platforms process an enormous amount of uh, information. So uh, Google doesn't know that uh, Antonio Pirra is a specific age, is a, is a man and he lives uh, there, but he knows that someone uh, aged between one age and another living in a wider area uh, is interesting to, interested to some products because he has been visiting websites. Mm -hmm. It, it basically, Google records all this, okay? Cookies records all what we do. And then they um, uh, enable uh, uh, an efficient profiling of customers. So you are annoyed by cookies, but then it could be an advantage if you, if you go for an advertised campaign for your beauty salon, because then Google has to use those data to, to address the message. Otherwise, it's like uh, putting the message out in, in nowhere and, uh, and no one will see it. So uh, to create, let's say, to, um, the cookie policy is useful because it, it can um, uh, vehicle uh, the message to the right person. That's, the, uh, that's the, the, the most important thing. Of course, we have to be, as, as consumers, let's say, on the side of consumers, be aware on what to accept and what not to accept. And then when there is an infringement to report it because there are many, many people who I never accepted the uh, newsletter, but I receive messages. And that's an, that can be reported because that's an, I, have, uh, I have to have stated somewhere and they have to uh, demonstrate where they got my message. And when I said, I clearly stated, I want to receive uh, information or I allow this website to give to third parties uh, my information. The one using my, my data has to show me where they got the authorization from. Otherwise, it's an infringement and it's actually, uh, it could be persecuted. But on the side of the business, this, the, the let's say the, the fact that there is an artificial intel intelligence grinding many information is really useful. It sometimes is quite vital because for a, for a, a shop, uh, Google offers also the chance to have local campaigns, uh, which are still set, yes, on the geographic area, but still on, on, on preferences, uh, similarities, on uh, profiles. So we are profiled, but uh, Google doesn't know my name. He just know that I am uh, aged between and between, living in a wide area and interested in something. That's what it grinds. And, and, and that, that's what Google sell, probably sells to other companies and other uh, brands, no? I think uh, there's a market behind that. Uh, uh, you, course, yeah, yeah, but yeah. So. Yes, there is a market of data, but the Even data package, the, the, data, the data are in packages and normally are sold in packages and normally are depersonalized. So they're not connected no, normally. They are depersonalized. They're not connected to an actual precise profile. They are a vague profile. Uh, if you're interested in this topic, there is a, a out of the business side, there is an, a really interesting documentary called uh, uh, The Great Hack, and it's about Cambridge Analytica and the way for political reason, um, 
let's say, parties of uh, alt-right um, all around the world that have managed to exploit uh, Cambridge Analytica uh, data to address uh, campaigns of all sorts. Uh, that's really interesting. And after Cambridge Analytica, we had a restriction on the profiling because that's uh, that was really important. Um, it was really important because in that case was influenced the, the, the opinion of people with the right to vote. Okay, but you are selling, you are telling us that uh, our emails are not sold by Google or by some other? If we, not your email. Uh, not, the that's, not, not the email. So, so what how, is, how do they know my emails? Because send me emails. Not, not Google. Google doesn't sell your email. Uh, either is someone you accepted the third party use or someone not using properly mm -hmm. your email. Let, <laughs> let's say let's say that uh, you have uh, emailed a company for a quotation. Okay. You, you, have, you were building your, your house and you, you, you emailed uh, the... Uh, the carpet fitter to have a quotation for the carpet. And then the carpet fitter got your email and now is sending you emails about carpets. That's an, not appropriate use of your email because you haven't given him the consent to use the email for the promotion. Yes. Okay. Okay. I understand, I understand that. And the, and the rest is third parties. Uh, so it means that somewhere you were, for instance, uh, you were signing a promotion for a mobile phone company. You are... Uh, uh, signing for a tree, let's say. And uh, in between all the condition, you tick the box, I accept the third party use of my data. That means that your data have been sold to someone uh, with an exact profile because the, the, the market of data works that the more the data is refined and precise, the more the value Available. it is. Yeah. Because there is a higher percentage that you're gonna convert uh, so you're gonna take an action likely to purchase. So let's let's say that uh, um, you have ticked the box of the carpet fitter to give um, third parties the your your information, and they know exactly where you live, um, which is your uh, no the, the, the let's say that uh, they know the way you the, the where you live, your age, uh, your um, interest, let's say. So this data is sold to, um, I don't know, uh, a bed, uh, uh, um, like a, a, a furniture shop. So the furniture shop is gonna send you an advertise which is precise on what you are interested in. So it's, no, it's quite natural then you will, more in, will be more inclined to, um, to purchase. Uh, what they are, the, what there is an offer. So in that case, the val, the, the data which have been sold, it's more uh, valuable. Oh, yeah. yeah. What uh, Google do is simply to through the cookie uh, to have uh, a, a vague profile, grind it, uh, grind all those profile and uh, feed this artificial intelligence who match the profiles with the uh, uh, content of the campaign. So when I'm setting the campaign online, I will write, uh, oh, you, you did it also in Google, if you did a sponsored on Google. On Google, you write, um, I want this post to go, uh, to come up for people who are interested in uh, uh, wine from uh, Douro, uh, who are interested in outdoor activities. So Facebook or in, in Google, okay. they, Go and pick all the all the people, in, of course, depersonalized, that have been looking actively online for those things. Of course, it's, it's going to be even longer. Uh, and for the ones who are more interested, we could, we could do a session on um, which are the campaigns which we can set on Google and the way Google uses uh, works for uh, placing the content. We are that, 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 that's why I, I think the, the use of hashtags like Doro or Port Wine or some or, or uh, yeah, are gonna, maybe dangerous. I don't the, use the, this is another thing. There's, this is another thing. I'm going to add this bit of information, then give the floor to Marco to go on. Uh, uh, let's say that the hashtag is another thing. Uh, this hashtag are more for the organic search. 
because hashtag clusters the information in a, in a, in a label. Let's say uh, four or five wineries are advertising a wine, okay? So they write hashtag local wine. If we type local wine, that's gonna be also the content of the hashtag, which shows four different contents. But in that case, it's not um, an, a, uh, an artificial intelligence driven advertisement, advertising. Mm -hmm. That's more on the organic part. Yeah. Let's say that the systems now are so sharp that uh, uh, we uh, don't need as many hashtags as we used to need. Uh, because uh, artificial intelligence is now able to read pictures, classify the pictures, and then if we want to add something which is not on show, we can use the hashtag. For instance, you get a, 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 beautif a, a beautiful man, let's say to, to be uh, gender equal, because normally beauty salons are uh, linked to just to, to women's use while well, it's more uh, it's a universal thing. You say like, and some man on the door of your shop, you take a picture and post it on your Facebook. It, you can avoid uh, writing something like hashtag man, hashtag and some man, hashtag uh, uh, beauty salon, because of course on view, there is the beauty salon, there is the man, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But if you wanna say like, uh, efficient treatment and use an hashtag related to the treatment, for instance, uh, um, air extension. You do hashtag air extension because it's not on view in the picture. Yeah. So, so the artificial intelligence of, in this case, social media is gonna grind that information. Okay. So I'm gonna leave the follow-up to Marco to carry on a bit and I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if in uh, in the very end, if you want to ask more or uh, you are interested in developing more topics, uh, just let us know. Thank you very much. Just I would tell you to leave just a minute to present uh, our other projects. Uh, well, to present Cultural Plus a little bit to say just some words about the project and lear learning villages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, we have uh, the next uh, three slides on the project. Uh, just I wanted to add uh, one last bit, you know, uh, because basically Google and Facebook are uh, publishing agencies, are uh, advertising agencies. If you think in general, Google, the more than 90% of what it gets is from advertising. It's like a great big advertising agency. So they don't sell your data, but they sell you know, that service to the rather enterprises to, to not use those data, but to uh, make a use of the strategy, you know? So the, you know, the data are theirs, that's it. You know, your data, when you create the Gmail is of Google, that's it. Okay, no selling, but it's just a very complex system. Anyway, uh, so uh, you know, we really hope this like meeting was interesting to trigger some reasoning also of what we do, do well, what we do wrong, and how to improve it. And how we do it, being more than rural, uh, that's um, the homepage of uh, Cultural uh, Plus. Um, and that what we do as a, as a partnership is actually to promote these uh, meetings, to promote uh, coaching section, sessions where we reason upon our edits. And uh, uh, Martin is our beloved coordinator of, the, of uh, Cultural. Maybe you want to spend some uh, words on the project. Well, yes, to say uh, we have been a, a long or, or quite a, some months, some years working on this project, but there is a still one year uh, to run. So, and we have uh, some prizes also to our uh, participants, and we will um, we will advertise these prizes, and we will uh, tell you how to participate. 
to motivate uh, your participation in the project. Uh, one of the outputs uh, we are very happy with is that we are twinning uh, villages and that uh, we have uh, designed, created uh, another project that they will, we will talk a little bit about uh, is learning villages. So in Kulural, still we have some uh, learning activities now in Portugal, uh, running one. We have some problems to fund the, the external participation from our organizations, but we have tried and we try to involve uh, these uh, cultural or rural entrepreneurs, rural mediators that we think they are very important agents uh, against the population and for rural development and dynamization. So um, I will tell you to go to our website to see our, um, or just to write us to, to get some information about our activities. Um, we hope you can you can participate uh, somehow online or presential much better uh, because this is uh, our first objective to connect people to provide a little bit of uh, internationalization um, expertise in, in people that don't have uh, such experience in going abroad, participating in, in this kind of uh, meetings and, and congress, conference, etc. And this is what I can say now. You are always welcome in the in the contact uh, level of our page. You can uh, find us always, and you will have uh, some feedback about our agenda and activities. And uh, basically, it's the framework where we are moving today. And uh, <clears throat> the portier, which also gives cultural, is to you know have um, so, uh, granted uh, international mobilities. So, which means uh, hands-on uh, activities, which are supported, uh, financed by Erasmus Plus program. And that's uh, you know one of the great opportunities of this program. Um, so uh, this uh, this month, so as we are in the Erasmus days, it's also important to understand how it works. Uh, generally, what we do is, um, uh, as organizations, we select interested people to participate to uh, transnational mobilities and to meet up. Uh, okay, if I don't know English, what happens? Uh, did you have language support and you have uh, translations from the teams which participate? Yeah, the most important thing is to uh, get to have the idea and to you know have invest time in yourself. That's what also we're doing uh, this afternoon. And together with Cultural Plus, um, as a team of people, we have uh, worked also on, uh, let's say, parallel um, facets of the same topic. As here, we are discussing, uh, of, you know, this crossing uh, the cultural setting with the rural setting, but uh, we have to also to talk about sustainability and uh, how to um, focus more on how innovate the rural sector in terms of um, uh, strategies and digital tools, as well as how to look at the educational process. And that's why two more uh, projects have, uh, have been, um, how could how we could say, they have been um, inspired. They have been born, exactly born inspired. From. They were born from the these uh, first um, uh, from this, uh, let's say, platform of ideas and meetings. Uh, so the, the other uh, project I'm talking about is Integral, and you can check, you know, if you go online, integral.eu, and you can, you know, look through the uh, the website uh, for, you know, how it it's planned. So next year. As we, you know, we are in Erasmus days, as I was saying, uh, we promote transnational mobility because Europe is based on uh, the meeting of people and uh, uh, the ideas which grow thanks to uh, cross fertilization um, of experience, of, uh, of ideas, of projects and so on. Um, 
So this second project is uh, in, uh, focused on innovation of agriculture uh, because that's what we uh, talking about. And uh, cultural is also focused on culture, but this new project is the main focus really in touching the ground of um, uh, rural experience and how to embed it in uh, with the material, any material uh, landscapes which uh, are in the areas of Portugal, Spain, from Italy and Greece. Again, that's uh, the the characters of uh, uh, of this project. Uh, the second one is uh, learning uh, is Learnville, um, and the concept is to uh, okay. We talk about innovation. We want we talk about heritage management and cultural. Um, discussions uh, but then how we reach that part how we make the local communities of rural areas uh, learn for by themselves and between each other because uh, you know the, the the generally we talk about the dots of enterprises of uh, maybe networks and so on but what about the rest of the citizens um how we innovate the mindset of remote areas because many times uh, innovation uh, you know it's seen only as an individual process so, I mean individual I mean which is of that ent of the entity or of that organization but you know if you are innovative in an area which is not innovative you will have many barriers to grow you will find a, like a, a rooftop of development Okay, um, so that's uh, the, the aim of learning villages, so like becoming a learning village, because that innovation process uh, must be either supported, must be, must be uh, nurtured by the outer community of those regions. So this is really uh, uh, the topic uh, for today to keep on rolling you know that's the the, the matter uh, i don't know if martin you want yes i would add i would add some some words about learn build about learning villages um, um in the first uh, stage we have selected some uh, villages of uh, the regions uh, of our participant partners uh, and there is a little uh, network of pilot learning villages where we are going to concentrate all our resources, all our uh, research, uh, our uh, activities. Uh, I think that we are going to impact uh, and we are going to share all these good practices uh, that we are learning from Rural Plus project and Interrural project. So I think we can really, uh, this is our aim to make an impact for these, for these villages that are facing uh, the population and uh, demographic uh, challenges, etc. But we have also uh, open uh, the scope and the regional um, aim to 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 incorporate any village that wants to to become a learning village to make an international network and really to think about uh, these expertises we can share between uh, the villages and these uh, needs needs of uh, concrete uh, learning. Uh, and educational uh, resources uh, so we are trying for example to see if uh, in one village there are uh, very good arts and crafts uh, experts artisans uh, how we can share this experience or any expert in any of the fields that are um, that are interest and interesting and relevant for for all the villages so we will be meeting uh, every three months uh, in this wide international learning village network and uh, hopefully we will uh, get some more funding for this network from other programs uh, as well as Erasmus plus programs to keep uh, building up uh, this interesting uh, project that I, I believe it's going to, to take us for some years uh, on 
And I think it's going to be a very, very interesting for uh, that they unite us all. And you are always welcome, whether you are in association in a rural uh, area, or you work in a, in a city government, or you know someone from the city government, or you even you are a citizen uh, interested in this, in this project, you are always welcome to our Learning Village uh, International Network. Thank you, Martin. Uh, I guess uh, for today, that's, uh, you know, um, uh, more or less what we have uh, had in mind to, uh, you know, keep you posted with uh, all the activities and also uh, to share the, the experience and expertise of, of, you know, within this great uh these great projects uh i don't know if uh, there's uh, any more question any more uh topic to raise uh as we you know we are almost in the uh, at the end of our uh, short journey um so that you know we can have some uh, open discussion particularly on uh, the topic of today which is uh, digital marketing, uh, online presence, online reputation. Maybe you know we will get uh, more uh, clients to the wife of Antonio. I mean that's uh, uh, the, <laughs> the today's uh, main feature. Uh, I don't know if uh, is there anyone who wants to uh, add anything or you know we just call it a day. Well, okay, I guess everything was super clear. So uh, we thank you very much for your attention. It's been a real pleasure and, you know, very, I think it's been very useful um, to like scratch this surface. And it would be nice to, uh, Martin, you know, I think it would be very nice to send some follow up uh, material so uh, to share the presentation we have had today. Uh, with some reference that has been put on the chat and you're more than free to share it with your contacts and with people, you know, which didn't make it for today because, you know, we're sure there have been many. Okay. Um, Marco, Francesco, I've taken yes. the freedom to, to make a schema about all you've said and I'm going to add uh, to, the new, to the newsletter in order to complete the Erasmus days and all that. So between and so, so nice. today, I'm going to, uh, to send the newsletter to all of you and, uh, and review, please, the, um, the uh, resume in the, in the summer. Resume, yeah. Yeah, the summer yeah. resume. Yeah, and that's for, in, in case I've, I've pointed out some information Back or something. Great. So, well, thank you very much then again. And also, thank you to Salia for this uh, nice tip. Uh, well, I wish you a good evening then. And enjoy the day. You too. If you're possible. See you, see you, everybody, in, in our Erasmus Plus uh, project Sundays. See you always. See you in Portugal. Bye. 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 Thank you. See you soon in Portugal, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People who can, who can who can come. See you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.